All right, good morning, everybody. Happy New Year. Welcome to the Garrison Community Update, first one of the new year. I'm Alicia Grady, Director of Personnel Family Readiness. We have a, a packed agenda today, so we'll move through it as quickly as possible. As always, we'd like to thank the Red Cross for providing coffee to us. Really very much appreciated. Um, when you ask questions of the speakers, please wait for the mic. Steve will be running around with the microphone. We record these, so it's important that we capture all the questions. Um, and with that, I will turn it over to Colonel Lucas. Thanks. Good morning, everybody. Thank you, Alicia. Uh, welcome, uh, everyone, to the, to, to the community update. We're going to start, I think, we'll start as, as usual with, some, with a recognition, and Sergeant Major Claiborne is going to help me uh, do that this morning. So uh, first of all, good morning. Those of you who don't know me, Command Sergeant Major Claiborne, I am your new garrison Command Sergeant Major, switched out with Sergeant Major Mulryan. Ryan, uh, supposed to be the day of the Amtrak derailment, but actually the day after because of the event. So I'm glad to be part of the team. My wife Sandy was supposed to be here. I don't know where she's at, so we're gonna, she's AWOL. We'll get accountability over here shortly. So I'm gonna call a few of our soldiers up from our uh, better opportunity uh, for signal service members team. So let me get uh, Garcia, Specialist Tripp, and PFC Ellis up here to the front. Loosen up, guys. Relax. Loosen up. We're not marching here. Come on up here. Stand right here. Stand these. So uh, what happened last month, uh, during the month of December, we had quite a few of our single service members that wanted to volunteer and give back to the community over the holiday. So we had several volunteers across the organization, but these three soldiers right here, they took the time and they really donated a lot of their personal time, some in, in, in the area of five, some in the area of 20 hours of their personal time over the Christmas holiday. And what they did was a rent -a Santa project. So they went out to different MWR activities, different unit activities, and they did some stuff like breakfast with Santa. They dressed up as Santa and they had kids come and sit down in our laps and they really just took the time to give back to our community and to make those kids happy, to make them smile. So I'm going to take some time this morning to recognize them and thank them for their service to our community and to our soldiers. So let's give them a round of applause real quick. So with that, guys, go ahead and have a seat. Ma'am. Over to you, sir. You have a, yep. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, you all, most of you are in uniform. Good morning. Good morning. All the rest of you, good morning. A uh, happy new year. A little late, but happy new year nonetheless. Uh, I would just tell you that um, I, I just want to thank everybody for their hard work over the holidays. You know, we started, uh, we came back from Japan, uh, had one day of kind of get our feet back under us and set things straight in the core, and then we went on block leave. And then our first day of block leave, I met my Sergeant Major, my DCG, out on the porch as I was talking, talking to Nicole Lucas about a train wreck on exit 116. So I figured, boy, the uh, block leave is going to be really exciting. Um, so I wanted to thank everybody for the great work that really the garrison did, tied in with our, uh, the first responders from our fire department and uh, all the great work, and then uh, kind of being flexible and agile to enable you know, our great community uh, partners out there to solve a really wicked hard problem. And uh, so I just want to say thanks for that. Uh, some things that have gone on, you know, 7th Infantry Division, Command Sergeant Major Halton's just joined the team. Sergeant Major, good to have you on the team. Really glad to get you here. I know your boss is really fired up to finally get his wingman with him. Uh, and, and so are we at the core, frankly, that you finally arrived. So uh, welcome. Uh, I would just tell you that, um, you know, as we look at the great work people have done, you know, through the holiday season, all the volunteer work that went on was just, frankly, really phenomenal. And there's a hundred different examples of all the great things people did for soldiers, families, sir, and airmen on JBLM. And I, I'll just throw one out there with Santa's Castle. Uh, 
you know, over a thousand families uh, participated in uh, Santa's Castle, and over 2,000 children, uh, you know, were were the beneficiaries of all that hard work. And I think that's that's one of, that's just a great example of you know what we do for families and soldiers. And that was just one in service, all of our servicemen and women at JBLM. And that's just one example of hundreds of examples of all the great work our volunteers did. And so I'd give everybody a round of applause for all of them, because there are many of them that are in here that did that and spent their time doing that. Uh, this is the centennial for First Corps, January 18th. That's our centennial. So you're going to see the theme for First Corps this entire year is going to be our 100, 100 years of excellence. And so you know we're starting our first, um, our first event. We'll have events all throughout the year. We're going to wait till the weather gets a little bit better before we invite you all to the big party. Uh, but our first event will be uh, next week when we have the, our uh, great community teammates come in. We're going to host a lunch that we do every, uh, every quarter with them. And I'm going to bring them by the headquarters because First Corps has gone through a redesign. You might have seen the first indication when there was a new vehicle parked in front of the Corps. Got a striker there. You're going to see there, there'll be some other things going on. We got rid of the uh, overhang. The historical folks are, are happy about that. I think it, it, it helps us kind of transition our headquarters. Hasn't been redone in 20 years. So we're going to take them through that as kind of the first piece of what we're, what's special about uh, America's First Corps. And then, as I said, we'll have some events uh, throughout the year that really highlight 100 years of service. Uh, and finally, I would just say uh, we had the Force Com Commander here yesterday. I appreciate uh, the folks out at McCord supporting that visit with a, you know, our four-star that runs the Army, frankly. Uh, had a really good mission readiness brief, and we talked a little bit about you know, <clears throat> the next four months. And I, I don't have to tell all of you, if you read the, read the newspaper every day, you know, the strategic environment is pretty complex out there, and not just in the Pacific, but all across the world. And uh, you know, while we have gotten through a lot of the exercises in the, cur in the Corps over the last seven months, the next four months are going to be pretty busy. And so there's going to be a lot of things going on at JBLM in relation to unit rehearsals and briefings and the rest of that, just to make sure we're as ready as we can be if our nation asks us to go do something in the world. And we're still sending soldiers to Afghanistan. We've got our airmen are flying all over the place. And so I, I would just ask you to be patient, because um, we will be pretty busy here the next four to six months. So I appreciate your support for that. But it's, uh, it's just a great time to be on Joint Base Lewis McCord with all the great teammates and community uh, friends and partners we've got. So I just say thanks for all you do, and I look forward to another great year. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So on behalf of my boss, Colonel Rebecca Sankis, and as well as on behalf of Chief Sandusky, uh, neither of them could be here today. They're on their way down to Lackland Air Force Base, where we have our basic military training. And, and basically, they're taking all of our commanders and our senior enlisted leaders to show and teach them how we build an airman from the ground up. And then those airmen obviously come into the world's greatest air force and to the best branch of service in our military. Am I right? Hello? Is it? And, Sorry. Sorry. They're within striking range, sir. That's, uh... So since the last time we met, uh, in addition to making sure we're, we're getting ready for the fight tonight and the fight for tomorrow, uh, our airmen have flown over 2,000 hours. I mean, 2,000 counts sounds pretty arbitrary. What, what does that 2,000 hours get us? Uh, besides the standard Afghanistan combat missions and going into taking the fight to ISIS and Syria and Iraq, uh, we also flew into uh, Saudi Arabia. We brought back the wreckage of that ballistic missile that the Houthis fired, and that was that same evidence that uh, uh, the UN Ambassador Haley used uh, to indict basically Iran what they did. Uh, we brought back a, a bunch of our First Corps uh, soldiers and teammates on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day so they could get back here and be with their families uh, through the snowstorm there. Supported Vice President Pence and his trip down in Afghanistan. And by far and away, the most dangerous mission that our, uh, our airmen did was support me as I flew a mission into Africa and back. So uh, it's a very death-defying any time I get behind the, uh, the controls of an aircraft. Um, so why, how can we do all this? It's because of the folks in this room. I can't say thank you enough on behalf of our airmen for everything that you do. Uh, it's going to continue to be busy, as the general alluded to, uh, but we couldn't do this without you and the support for our airmen and their families. So with that, thank you so much. Thank you. Mm, what's that? 
Okay, so a lot to cover this morning. Um, uh, thank you, sir. And thank you, Colonel Snelson, for the opening comments uh, and the welcome. Um, I think all of the things that I might have covered have been said, so that's, um, that's good. The only thing I want to share is one more thank you just to the community, to the response um, to the train derailment. And a one kind of specific ask, you know, we as a garrison and as an installation, we're going to walk ourselves through an AAR on that event and make some changes. So any feedback that you have from your perspective, from your, from your units that came back from airmen, soldiers, the you know, spouses, we want that feedback. So, um, you know, push that into DPTMS. You can fill it out on your sheet that's sitting right here on your table. But I want to make sure I capture sort of all the things that we all noticed during that event. And the one thing I'll... I'll that I wanted to just share with you is, you know, thanks for your patience as we worked through the traffic challenges. There were so many other things going on, but those traffic challenges really lasted for several days. Um, so thanks for your patience as we did that. And then the challenge I'm going to give you is, please, I mean, I spend a lot of time learning my way around JBLM. I still drive by places I haven't seen, and I've been here now, I think, four or five months. Um, learn another egress route of the installation if you don't know more than one or two. Because in a crisis like that, when we were trying to utilize different gates that we don't use all the time, route people through training areas which are really dark, um, and, and there's multiple turns that you have to make, if you know that route ahead of time, you can take it and help relieve some of this traffic pressure that inevitably occurs um, on the installation. So, so that's your homework in between you know, this last accident and hopefully not another one. But help spread that word, because if you know those other routes, and there were a lot of people that I interacted with that said, I don't know that route, and I'm afraid to take it. Um, and so they, had, they just had to get in the line at the DuPont gate. Uh, so learn another way um, and help me pass that message, because there's multiple options to exit the installation, but you really got to know what you're doing um, before you, you take that route for the first time. Um, and again, thanks in advance for any other kind of AAR comments that you want to give, a, give us into the garrison so we can incorporate that into the way we, we handle an event like that when they happen. Um, I think, Buck, are you next? All right, over to you. General Valesky, Colonel Snelson, Colonel Lucas, always an undeserved pleasure to be with you at the community update. I uh, just want to highlight for everybody, these are all in your packet. I do want to hit, once again, the personal shred days that are available on the 2nd of February and the 2nd of March. Uh, I do want to apologize up front. We've had to curtail some of our operations at the uh, shred facility. Uh, we're bringing on a new employee, so uh, we're getting them up to speed. But we will continue to run those, uh, those shred days for folks to be able to get rid of their, uh, uh, document, their personal documents and uh, maintain uh, your own operational security at home. Again, the rest of these are probably going to be covered by the Ministry of Fun. Uh, I know all of you are looking forward to the, uh, the, the, uh, the winter breaks that are coming up with your kids. Again, uh, Uncle Buck tells you, hook them to the plow, don't let them run free, and we'll all be much better off. Uh, but I do want to use the remaining time, we've got a lot to get through, uh, once again to caution everyone in this room about uh, uh, recreating, if you will, up on Engineer Bluff in our close-in training areas. Okay, we have cougars, we have bobcats, and we have black bears. We had a wildlife encounter this morning during PT. A uh, young soldier had a chance encounter with a juvenile bear. Luckily, uh, the bear and the soldier both survived with, with a uh, minor meeting engagement. But the problem is, folks, I understand, especially for our folks who live in Broadmoor and in Clarkdale, that the Lewis National Park, just on the other side of that fence, is a great place to walk your dog, go for a run, bike ride. But again, that is a huge green space uh, and we have some very large predator species out there, to, uh, out there to include coyotes. So once again, I strongly, strongly encourage you that in the morning, uh, clearly units are already doing this, if you're doing uh, PT up on Engineer Bluff, and it's a great place to do PT. Some good hills up there, there's some good functional fitness uh, opportunities, 100% available, but please be careful when you're up there. And for those of you that are operating on the weekends or you're up there, like I said, walking your dog, going for a walk, biking, whatever it is, be aware. Nobody gets a pass. Okay, so just wanted to put that out. Uh, I'd love to close with a humorous anecdote, but I've been told not to. So, uh, <laughs> next slide, please. I believe, yep. Um, someone's going to talk about, Joe Peake's going to talk about patriotic. Thank you, Buck. It's always a pleasure to follow you. I would follow you anywhere. Good morning, I'm Joe Peake, the Joint Base Garrison Public Affairs Office, and Happy New Year. Uh, 
the event you see up here on the slide, this is an event that's been going on in this area for about 25 or 30 years. For many years it was done here on Joint Base lewis McCord, but two or three years ago it moved to downtown Tacoma to Stadium High School. This is an opportunity, that's the best way to put this, for any units, Army, Air Force, uh, Navy, or Marines, uh, here on the base, as well as Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, if you are a unit that has colors, then the Washington State Patriotic Day is an event for you. It's an opportunity to, to gather, and as you can see there, usually there's 200 to 300 sets of colors there, and uh, I believe this year General Burleson from 7th ID is the guest speaker, and uh, it's, it's just a really great event. Uh, you have to go online and register uh, with the event organizers, let them know that you're coming. What they would like this year is they're asking units to come with an American flag as well as their unit colors. And if you don't have unit colors, then you can go there with an American flag. That's what they're looking for this year. So that's the uh, Washington State Patriotic Day. I would like to make one other uh, hua. Uh, some talk already about the, uh, the derailment of the train back on 18 December. We learned during that time the power of social media. A lot of people were asking as we put several posts on uh, the JBLM page, who is the person behind the curtain? <laughs> and she's going to kill me for doing this. But if you remember the Wizard of Oz, pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. Well, right back here uh, is Raina. Put your hand up, Raina. Raina is the face behind the Joint Base Lewis McCord Facebook uh, page. And in three days, she put up 23 posts that reached more than 370,000 people. And she helped navigate people around JBLM on the east, the west, and through the base. Because as Colonel Lucas said, a lot of people did not know how to get home if I-5 was blocked. So anyway, thank you, Raina. And I will be followed by... So just to put a plug in for uh, Washington uh, State Patriotic Day, I had the privilege of participating yes, last year as a participant, and I will tell you it is an extremely impressive event. So if you have an opportunity to go, I highly encourage you to do so. It's very moving, very impressive, um, great event. So. Um, Military spouse career event, Hiring Our Heroes. We partner with Hiring Our Heroes. They are through the US Chamber of Commerce. This is our third year doing the spouse event, which will be held February 7th and 9th. Um, please make sure you get this information out to all of our spouses who are seeking jobs. We currently have 56 employers registered. We do a networking reception the night before. This is an opportunity for spouses to get kind of a pre-taste of what's to come on the following day. Um, we have some guest speakers that evening and then um, on the actual hiring fair, um, they will accept resumes, they will do interviews on the spot. Last year, 36 spouses received job offers the day of the hiring fair, and I believe there were another 75 that follow on after that that got jobs. So it's a great event. Please help us get the word out. Um, it's a great, great way for our spouses to get jobs in the local area. Next. And then, um, just as a reminder, we do a family readiness group and key spouse uh, leader training. Here's all the dates and times um, that we do this. Please uh, contact us if you have um, family readiness group leaders or key spouses who are new that need the training. If you just need a refresher training, it's always good to, to um, uh, refresh your skills. And we are there to support. There's a lot of opportunities that we have also then we'll link you to volunteer opportunities and ways to appreciate your volunteers and things like that within your FRGs. Any questions? Okay, B. Thank you. Good morning, I'm B. Westcott Curl and I'm the Division Chief for Child, Youth and School Services. And I always get to tell you all the good news, like there's going to be an increase in fees for childcare. Um, Actually, the policy goes into effect one February, and really the difference is between two and twenty-four dollars. It really kind of covers the two percent increase you just got. Thank you very much for giving it back to the United States government. Um, 
The big, another big change is DOD contractors are not going to be able to be subsidized, which uh, that's a good thing for service members because it, it allows for more child care space for service members. Um, the, another good thing is that if you have a spouse who is looking for a job and after the 90 days they still don't have a job, the garrison commander has the authority to say, you can have another 90 days to find a job without being kicked out of child care. Um, kicked out's not really a good word, sorry. Asked to leave because we are there for, for uh, uh, single, uh, dual military, um, and dual working families. And as you know and have probably heard, we still have a little bit of a waiting list. And so we try to get folks in as best we can. Um, we have put this out via email and by uh, Facebook. We will put out another letter mid-month just to remind folks, and then the centers are both, are all telling folks. Next slide, please. Youth sports hasn't changed, really. Uh, these are the fees that we've been doing. We're still between $50 and $100 less than off-post. Um, we have lots of clinics that we're doing. In fact, uh, over the winter breaks, we noticed on the calendar there's lots of winter breaks for the school districts. We have some great sports camps coming up. We have uh, school age and middle school teen uh, programming going on. So get with the folks in the back. My uh, team members from Parent Central and School Support Services are in the back. Wave your hands, folks. Thank you. Um, the other thing is, uh, making sure that uh, you know that for FRG meetings, we can do kids on site child care, and that uh, Armed Forces Community Services helps support that. Lydia Hughes is in the back if you need to talk to her about that. That's it. Thank you. Uh, good morning. My, my name is Sergeant Major Mark Pivens uh, from Madigan Army Medical Center. And on behalf of Colonel Michael Place, who is currently on some well-deserved leave, I want to take a few minutes and talk to you about what's going on inside Madigan. Next slide, please. On February 2nd, uh, we will be dedicating our preventive medicine uh, facility in honor of Brigadier General Guthrie Turner, Jr. Uh, General Turner was the first African-American commanding general of Madigan Army Medical Center in the early 80s and he was also a preventive medicine officer. So if you can make it, please feel free to come out to the dedication ceremony. Next slide, please. For those who uh, may not know, our TBI clinic has moved. Uh, we are no longer over in the Madigan Annex. We are now in the Intrepid Spirit Building, which is a brand new uh, building on the Garner Loop, which goes behind Madigan. Uh, the new complex is located right behind the uh, credit union. So if your troopers have TBI appointments, make sure they know they don't go to the old building. They'll just waste time and get redirected across. Next slide, please. January is uh, Blood Donor Month. Uh, this is a uh, critical time. And first of all, I'd like to thank the community for the massive turnout for the Amtrak derailment. Uh, I think you overwhelmed our blood donor center. There was, I think, four or five hour wait just to give. But the team is in the back back there. Uh, can you raise your hand, sir? Looks like, looks like Santa Claus. Um, instead of giving out gifts, he'll take your gift of blood. So uh, please feel free to donate uh, units if you want to schedule donations. You can get with the team back there and they can schedule donates for your units to come in. And don't forget that it's not just January. You know, blood does expire. It don't have an infinite shelf life. So please schedule to deliver a give blood year round. We definitely need it. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, those should know that TRICARE has changed. Uh, we now have TRICARE Prime and TRICARE Select. Uh, quite a bit of changes. So if you need specific information on it, we do have a TRICARE office inside Madigan on the second floor behind PMO. We also have Ms. Martin here, if you have direct questions. She is our resident expert on all the new changes. And you can also go online to tricare.mil. Next slide, please. Of note, uh, when the changes took effect on January 1st, any old referral or authorization you have is still good. It's an effective until it expires. Uh, once it expires, like any other referral authorization, you have to get a new referral authorization to continue your, uh, your service. Next slide, please. Uh, with everything, there's changes, and on this, you see our pharmacy co-pays have changed for TRICARE. So if you go downtown to one of the local uh, pharmacies, your co-pay has increased starting February 1st. But as always, any military treatment facility, <coughs> Madigan, 
uh, your pharmaceuticals are free. So please feel free to come in. I know there's a little bit of a wait sometimes, but you don't have to pay out of pocket. Next slide, please. Uh, appointments. If you uh, need to make an appointment in Madigan, you can always call that 1-800 number and make your appointment. You can also use the patient portal uh, in, a, in MHS Genesis and message your provider. Uh, so when you, if you can't find your provider inside there, any provider inside of that team can get the message and get it to your provider. So if you're in Cardinal or Swank or anything, anything like this, you find anybody inside that department, send them a message and they will get it to the appropriate provider. Next slide, please. As always, uh, Madigan is on every form of social media out there. Our team does a phenomenal job, I, I think, getting people informed. And you also have our homepage to reach out to us. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to ask me, the team here. And if we don't know the answer, we'll definitely get the answer, and we will be here uh, following the uh, presentation. Next slide. Good morning, everyone. So it's cold outside, we all know that, and some of you may not be too um, thrilled with driving in icy, snowing conditions. One of the ways that you can avoid that is joining a van pool. Let somebody else do that driving. You know, that person in your van pool that's from Michigan and they, they're used to all that snow and driving in it, you can go ahead and let them do all that driving for you. Um, another issue that a lot of people have is in general, your commute takes a lot of time, and it costs you a lot of money. Gas isn't cheap, so it's costing us a lot of money. Joining a van pool can actually help you save the money. It may not help you save time, but you could be doing emails in the back, or just reading a book, or taking a nap, or something like that. So you can use that time wisely instead of just driving and sitting in traffic and worrying about that. You may not be aware of the uh, Mass Transit uh, Benefit Program, but it is a program where you have a $255 a month benefit to join a van pool, so you're uh, effectively getting a free ride to work. Um, a lot of people's problem is once they got on base on a van pool, then what do they do? Because they have all these appointments, they need to get to lunch. So um, we do have Go Transit. I'm not sure, are you guys familiar with Go Transit service? You've seen the bus signs, you've people, seen people stopping there. So it's a great free service for you. It's a great free service for your service members who may have to get appointments. You don't have to lose two service members. If somebody doesn't have a car and they need to make it to an appointment at Madigan, they can hop on Go Transit and get around where they need to go. Next slide. Um, keeping on the it's cold theme, um, our buildings may be cold or they may be perfect for you, but here are some strategies for you to stay warm in your buildings. Um, checking your thermostat, uh, making sure that you're, you know, I think a lot of people in some of the older buildings have a radiator that they can actually adjust, so make sure those valves are adjusted to where they need, need to be. Um, a lot of buildings these days are automated too, so if something's not working out for that, please let the um, PW help desk aware of that so they can come and fix that. Make sure you guys don't freeze or some people are actually too warm in their buildings. Um, kind of treat your office like you would at home, you know, keep your windows closed, keep your doors ho uh, closed. Don't let that heat escape. Dress properly. I mean, you know, I'm sure you guys aren't going to your office in flip-flops and a tank top, but, you know, if you are just somebody who can wear whatever they want, make sure you have a sweater and some layers on. Um, and if you're, especially if you're a building energy monitor, um, be checking out your building. Um, check, like, in the door frames and make sure, you know, there's no heat escaping there. If you see insulation that's coming out somewhere, let the public work help desk know so they can address that issue. And again, those old uh, radiators, make sure they're not coated in dust because that can help you out a lot too by just keeping those clear. Um, and then personal heaters are actually prohibited. So it's not just an environmental cost savings issue, it's also a safety issue as well, fire hazard. So if the, uh, you do need a waiver for that in your building, please make sure you're getting it approved by the public works director. Um, if you have any questions about this or the GO, you can uh, visit our GO Lewis McCord Facebook page or also the Sustainable JBLM Facebook page. Thanks. Good morning. My name is Ron Hernandez. I'm representing the Housing Division today. Our update from the Housing Division is the recently published BH rates for 2018. You see behind me the width dependent rate. On average, we received an increase of 5.84% uh, slide. There's the without dependent rate. Um, there's one thing I could share or encourage is that uh, to continue to encourage your junior enlisted to take full advantage 
of our housing services office. Recently, I just stopped in there to kind of get the full brief to make sure what they were briefing our soldiers. And I uh, realized there's just a, a wealth of information about leases and all the in particulars that landlords are putting in those leases, like continual uh, increases to their, uh, their rate uh, whenever the landlord wants to. So if I have a plea out there to the units to encourage the, especially the junior enlisted soldiers to get in there so they can take full advantage of those services. Outside of that, the Defense Travel Management Office has published it. It is what it is. We're very fortunate in that we did receive an increase. A lot of installations did not receive any increase. Do I have any questions? Thank you very much. Morning. Kelly Wetzel from MWR, going to give you a quick rundown of the fun stuff that's happening over the next few months and uh, weeks. First off, the baby shower, aimed at families who have either had a child in the last six months or who are expecting a child in the next six months. So you can stop by, pick up a lot of good information, lots of really cool, free stuff to take home, great prizes, lots of good giveaways, um, and an an opportunity for those expectant parents uh, and parents of newborns to get information about helping agencies on base. The next one is the uh, Commander's Cup Bowling. This is geared toward active duty only, so this is not the intramural program. This is the Commander's Cup Bowling Competition. So if you've got folks who are bowlers and you want to compete, you need to send a representative from your squadron or your unit to this meeting to make sure that they are registered to, to play. And then the games start February 8th. The next one is the uh, coming up in February, the Daddy Daughter Sweetheart Ballet and Tea Party. Uh, this is the first time we've done this event. Want to get the dads and daughters together to do something fun for a Valentine's Day sort of a, a celebration there. And then a couple of other things that are coming up. The fitness fair on the 13th. If you made a New Year's resolution to sort of get in shape, but you really haven't had any direction yet as to what you want to do at one of our fitness centers, this is an opportunity to come and get a sample of all of the classes that we teach in our fitness centers, plus find out what's going on inside the fitness center. Check out the equipment. Talk to the folks who are teaching classes so you get an idea about how to fulfill that New Year's resolution. Uh, the CYS Job Fair, actually the 16th at Eagles Pride Golf Course is the next one coming up. And then Family Movie Night, a free movie for you and your families. Just show up on the 26th to the Book Patch Library and you can watch a movie there. And then I've got something else that was just recently added on the 24th of January. The Warrior Zone is starting back up their Texas Hold'em Tournament. So if you like to play cards and you like to win uh, cash gift cards, this is a chance for you to come out and win. Uh, starts on the 24th, it runs for 10 weeks, every Wednesday, um, and it's $7 a night to buy in. Next slide, please. And then some of the things coming up, Sporting Clays, the first part of every month. Um, and then in March, the Shamrock and Run kicks off our running season. So we have a couple of months break during the year, and then in March, the Shamrock and Run is our actual first run of the year on base. Um, and then the Easter Dash, changing days this time. It used to be Easter Sunday. Now we're going to move it back to that Saturday before Easter so that if you've got, if you want to go to church, you've got a family celebration, you don't have to tell the kids, now we need to stay home. Everybody can come out on Saturday and, and do it that way. Um, something else coming up in February, the club's hosting their first ever Groundhog Day party. On the 2nd of February, it's a Friday starting at 4 o'clock in the pub, um, and then we've uh, hired a trivia company to come in, so get your trivia group together so that you can win some really cool prizes, and uh, we'll talk, you know, whether or not it's going to be spring or whether it's going to be winter depends on what the groundhog says back in, uh, in Puxatawney. Um, and then... Just a quick plug for the MWR bookstore inside of Stone Education Center. If you have or you know somebody who has VA money that they want or need to spend on education, they need to buy supplies, they need to get computers or books and things like that, the folks in the bookstore are there to help you and then any of the profits are reinvested right back into MWR facilities. So it's a good resource for folks who are taking classes on base or off base to get some good prices on the equipment and the, and the books that they need. If anybody has any questions, I'll be at the table board afterwards. Thanks.
Good morning, my name is Donis, and uh, Blakely, Ryan, Andrew, and I, we make up the installation BOSS team. So uh, in BOSS, uh, these are the values and the foundation that BOSS is built off of. Quality of life, recreation and leisure, and uh, community service. So these are the three pillars that BOSS follows. Community service, uh, for those uh, soldiers that were recognized uh, before we started today, that was one of our community service events. It was really a successful program and everybody really enjoyed themselves, everybody that uh, you know hired us. Um, our quality of life is for all those single service members living in the barracks or the dorms. They have issues uh, that they need to tell us about that they're not getting fixed at their uh, at their barracks, then they can let us know and we can speak to um, the professionals to make sure those issues are taken care of. We also have our designated driver program, which is done every weekend by our volunteers to ensure that any soldiers or airmen that are stuck and you know they're, they're intoxicated, they can come and call us and we'll pick up the phone and uh, drive our vans to go pick them up. So um, these, are, these are our values that we follow and which uh, help them uh, make the BOSS program really successful. So I'm going to hand uh, the mic over to Blakely, and he's going to talk about our events that we have going on in the month of January. Good morning. So as I said before, I'm Blakely, or Specialist Blakely, Brett. And for the month of January, we have some pretty cool things going on for the single service members. The first thing we have going on, which is this upcoming Saturday, is Walker Stalker Con slash Heroes and Villains Con, where we're going to be taking a group of service members down to the Portland Convention Center to go and hang out with, and they'll get an opportunity to hang out with and meet some of the actors from the Walking Dead series, such as Daryl, Carl, people like that, and then... Um, at the same time in the same convention center is the Heroes and Villains Con, which is going to have actors and actresses from Arrow, The Punisher, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and stuff like that. And so this is an opportunity that we found that is really cool. It's going to be a neat experience. It's completely free for all of them. And the best part about this is if, they're, if they are not able to go with us on the BOSS program, it is also available free for all service members. So if you guys want to push that out and help us, it's anybody can go. It's at the Portland Convention Center. It's free for anybody with a valid military ID to get in, for, to get in to and have fun and enjoy themselves. And then the other thing is on the 27th of January, we are going to go up to Paradise at Mount Rainier and go snowshoeing and track around in the snow there, have some fun. Um, this is a life skill event, so what we are planning on doing is having them have a takeaway, which will be the snowshoes so they can continue on, continue to snowshoe and grow on the lessons and the skills that we have already gave them from this event. Thank you. If you guys want any more information regarding uh, these events, you know your, uh, your soldiers or airmen that are interested in any of, the, any of these events, then you can um, come to our table. We're sitting right there. Um, you guys raise your hand. Yep, right there. And then I'll give you guys uh, our contact information and you can just uh, sign up or if you're interested in future events, then uh, you can contact us for that as well. Thank you. Good morning, JBLM. Good morning. What a beautiful morning, right? Oh? Yeah, uh, I'm Chaplain Young Kim. I'm the uh, Garrison uh, Ops and Plans Chaplain. Yeah, on behalf of a Chaplain Gauthier, Garrison Chaplain, I'd like to share with you about the, uh, our programs. Three programs. Number one is um, Faith and Family University Night. Every Wednesday evening, we provide the meals and also the uh, child care providers. Start from 5 o'clock at main, uh, the uh, Lewis Main Chapel. Okay, uh, the, uh, next week, we're going to have uh, Relational Wisdom 360. Uh, that is for the uh, uh, UMT members. Okay, uh, that is a training and a seminar. And also, the, uh, as you know, that we're going to have a national prayer breakfast, uh, um, second of February, uh, 0700 hours at Macquarie Club. We'll provide 400 tickets for entire uh, JBLM. So we're going to hand out the uh, tickets this afternoon through your UMTs. Or if you'd like to attend, uh, please contact your unit chaplain first, then they will uh, give it to you tickets. 
And the Ash Wednesday service and the masses, uh, 14 February is Ash Wednesday. Uh, we have a soldier's chapel of the uh, 11 o'clock. We have an Ash Wednesday service. And we have a Catholic masses. Um, we hand out the, uh, the flyers already. If you don't have one, we have a, a bunch of uh, the flyers, the old schedules, Ash Wednesday schedules. Um, one April, 0600 hours, we're going to have a combined Easter uh, sunrise service at the, uh, uh, the uh, Pray to Fill. Okay. Do you have any question? Okay. If not, God bless. Thanks, sir. Oh, okay. next. It's okay. Yeah, skip. Good morning, leaders and attendees. My name is Bob Lewanag, the Commissary Director here at Fort Lewis. Uh, we've been still getting a lot of inquiries regarding the, uh, the military gold star card. All commissaries are accepting both since last November. The only difference is if you use the blue star card, you earn two points for every dollar spent. So you can use that. We have those uh, signs hanging on every in-lane cash registers and the self-checkouts and the doors. Next slide, please. Okay, this is a reminder for the uh, scholarship application deadline, which is uh, next month, February 16th. And please, when uh, the applicants uh, try to uh, send their application, please do not fax it or email it to us. They can either go to the store in person by mail, UPS, FedEx, or UPS. Next slide, please. Okay, this upcoming uh, Pro Bowl, January 28th, and Super Bowl. So if you would like to uh, enjoy your viewing of the Super Bowl and the Pro Bowl, you can place your uh, special order of the uh, party trays. That includes also the sushi trays. And you can place that order 24 to 48 hours in advance. And this, this or, those are available at the commissary at Fort Lewis and McCord. And you have the telephone numbers listed on the screen. Next slide, please. All right, we will have another warehouse sales in the commissary uh, between the 19th and the 21st. And sometimes we even extended that for a couple of days. And the list will be available next week. Next slide, please. All right, our first holiday for this month, the federal holiday is uh, Monday. But remember, all federal holidays, with the exception of Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's, both Lewis and McCord commissaries are open on all federal holidays. However, we're still getting calls every 10 seconds if we're open. And we are only open on those hours from 9 to five, or 1,700 hours for military personnel. Any question, please? Thank you, have a nice day. Good morning, everyone. I'm Roy Turner with The Exchange. I'm a senior manager at the Lewis Main Store. I'm hoping everyone had a good holiday season. And so if you did, I do want you to maybe say thank you to all the cashiers up front because they went through it and they're really trying to take care of you. What we'd like to talk about right now is one of the things having to do with holidays. So at the Lewis Main Store, we are open from 10 to 1900 on holidays and we have a strategy to try to take care of you during the longer period later in the day. The next thing is don't forget we do have H&R Block if you'd like those services. Next slide, please. One of the things we have coming up here is free advanced screening. This movie is going to be a really hot movie. I know a lot of you are aware of it. All you have to do is, when, like when you come into the Lewis Main Store, please go to the back office, see one of the ladies sitting in the back, and we'll be happy to give you those tickets. So again, please come see us. We really want to take care of you, and we want your soldiers to be able to go to this movie. Next slide, please. If you're interested in joining... Whoops, sorry. Okay, sorry about that. If you have any questions, I'll be up here ready to help you. Good 
Good morning. Um, my name is Laura Basie. I'm here for Serena West, our Spouses Club president, who couldn't be here today. We have had an amazing first half to our uh, Spouse Club year, running from September to May, and are looking forward to an action-packed second half. And the best thing about January 1st rolling around is membership is now down to $15 for the second half of the year. Um, some of you may be asking, you know, why do we need to know this? And the great thing about the Spouses Club, especially this time of year where it's dark and it's rainy and maybe you just moved here, as you're talking to soldiers and spouses and airmen and their spouses, we encourage you just to let them know about the Spouses Club. We have subclubs, cooking clubs, book club, wine club, travel club, all kinds of things just to get out of the house and get to know the other people here at JBLM. Uh, one of the big events that we do have coming up in March, um, we have an amazing spouse, Julia Bowers, who is leading up Ace Night. The big thing that the Spouse Club does every year is to raise money for grants and scholarships. We do a lot of community outreach. And this is our big, big push in the spring. It is uh, not just a spouse event. You can come with a date. You can come as a girls' night. You can come as a unit. Um, tickets are available online at our Lewis Community Spouses Club.org website. And um, what we're doing right now, in addition to selling those tickets, is asking for large ticket item donations for our live auction. We're expecting, uh, we're accepting large ticket items as well as baskets. Um, with the baskets, and it can be any theme that you can come up with. Um, Julia would just like the theme, not necessarily the basket, by mid-February. And then we have um, a silent auction, a live auction. There are games. It's a real fun night and a great way to get out. So um, any questions, you can go to the Lewis Community Spouses Club website. And Julia's email is on the slide, which I know gets emailed out. Thank you. All right, thank you to all the briefers. Uh, feels like a race some days trying to get through all the material. Um, so before we do anything else, are there any questions? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Well, good morning, everyone. How's everybody doing? <laughs> Happy New Year to all of you. <laughs> I haven't seen you all since last year. Yeah. So there's, there's really one thing I want to um, say to the, the, to the unit commanders and SAR majors here is that 31 March, the BAH document has got to be turned in. That's no later than. So what you saw up here with the BAH numbers and dollars amount, if, you don't, if the soldiers don't update their BAH, all that will go away. So for instance, if, you, if, you, if the soldier does not turn in the marriage document or a divorce decree, there's going to be an impact on 1 April. That means the soldier is not going to get paid BAH. So well, who of you that will talk to your commands or your, you know, the FRG, talk to the soldiers and the families to ensure that the families tell the soldiers to bring those documents in because the, the blended retirement, it took us almost six months to get that. It doesn't take that long to complete the BAH because that's going to significantly hinder the leadership time when we have to stop what we're doing to solve some issues because the, the soldiers could not turn in the, uh, the document uh, to the Army. So please, don't wait till the last minute. Don't wait till 20 or, or uh, 30 March to t have all that complete. We want to complete that as soon as possible. All right, cool. Again, I just want to assure to you that this is the best installation across the Army. All right, and I say that because yesterday the Force Comp Commander had awarded the MP Brigade uh, one with the best, we had the best retention, Forcecom best retention of the year winner, and also recognizes the kennel here as the best in, in Forcecom level. So again, these units and soldiers have represented JBLM uh, the best as can be. So thank you for all that you do. Hey, I'm uh, Steve Johnson, the Deputy Commander for First Special Force Group, and I just wanted to uh, highlight the 12 strong screening that's happening this Saturday at 1900 over at Cary Theater. We're looking, this is a pretty big event for us. It really, the 12 Strong movie, for those of you that don't know, highlights the initial actions in Afghanistan in 2001 by, uh, by the Green Berets and, and what we did out there on the ground. 
We're using this as a little bit of a uh, recruiting event. So what I'll ask all the senior leaders in this room, if you have any of your uh, soldiers that are even remotely interested in special forces, we're gonna have recruiters on the ground there. Um, we're gonna have sat displays out front. We're gonna have uh, Green Berets from the first special forces group out there to answer any questions that anybody might have. Um, so we're really looking at this as a big event. I know a bunch of us at our head table here, our senior leaders are already planning on attending. Um, I think it's gonna be a good turnout. Um, if, if you, uh, obviously you can get tickets uh, through AFES, but if you're having trouble, uh, come talk to us and we'll make sure uh, you guys get tickets to get in. Again, I think it's gonna be a really good event. Again, uh, this Saturday, the 13th at 1900 at Cary Theater, 12 strong. Again, this is a pre-screening. So this, the, this, this movie won't premiere until uh, the, the following weekend. So you get a, pre, uh, a sneak peek at it. And I think it's gonna be a good event. Thanks. Thank you. All right, any other questions or additions? All right, Sergeant Major, let me let you. So I just have uh, two more things real quick. First of all, I, my wife Sandy's here now, so if you haven't had a chance, Sandy, if you don't mind standing up. <laughs> and so I owe her an apology because, you know, I, I counted hers uh, AWOL earlier. Uh, unfortunately, I now have a parking complaint. That was the issue. So. Noted, I'll take care of the parking over here. Uh, definitely something I can fix. All right, so one thing I didn't hear mentioned that's very important is on the 19th at French Theater at 1400 is the installation retirement ceremony. So I didn't hear that mentioned, but it's very important that we go out and we recognize our soldiers and our airmen that are retiring here on the installation. It only happens one time. We need to go out there and support those folks as they transition out of the Army. So with that, sir, do you have any closing comments? No, good. Thanks, Sergeant. All right. Thank you guys very much for attending. I appreciate it. Have a great one. Cool.